Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a screen post process effect that you can actually not only animate, but you can actually affect it uh, through gameplay. So I'm going to walk in, into the rain here, and I get this effect on my screen where you have kind of like, uh, it's supposed to look kind of like rain running down the screen. I'm not maybe the best artist, but uh, but then when I go back out, it disappears. So just a real simple effect, and it's actually really easy to set up. So I will show you how to do this real quick. Okay, so basically everything you'll see here has been covered in one tutorial or another, but I'm just trying to kind of put it all into one thing here. So I've got a material that's going to run through and uh, do the raindrops. Okay, so here's the material. And it's not as complicated as it looks. Basically, uh, it's a fancy way of having the screen the rain texture pan down the screen uh the important stuff is that you know you you can use a panner to uh to make it go down then you're gonna want to multiply it by some number less than one probably to to lessen the effect otherwise it's a pretty intense effect then you're gonna want to clamp it down for one thing run it through a mask which is just gonna let the red and the green through in my case i also ha i also used a mask here so that it uh, doesn't affect the very edges of the screen and that's just because otherwise it can actually try to grab pixels from off the edge of the screen which doesn't work so anyways <coughs> then you need to uh, set up a screen position node and uh, set it to screen align run it also through a red and green mask and then add it to your panning effect then plug all of that into this, your scene texture sample. Now the important part here though is uh, I have a parameter called drips and uh, you can look for, it's going to be a scalar oop, scalar, a scalar parameter you drag that in, you can set the default value and you give it a name. So I have it plugged into a lerp so when it's set at zero it's going to go and just do the default screen position and then when it's set to 1, you, you probably can't see it real great right now, but it's going to uh, go to this one instead, which has all my rain distortion. So, and then, like I say, it's super important you name it here. Uh, I did drips. Uh, you Okay, you'll see why that's important in a minute. Make sure you get the spelling exactly how you want it. Uh, cap, you know, uh, case how you want it, so capital here or, or lowercase there or whatever. Okay, now here's another really important part. You want to go to new post process chain. Name it whatever you want. Uh, let's do rain. Pff, I don't know. Run. I don't know. Sure, let's do it. Uh, if if you have more post process effects, you want to plug them all into one chain. And uh, I have other tutorials that go into this further, but this one's just supposed to be kind of basic. So I'll show you show you just the basics here. You want to add a new material effect and go and add that material into the material part of that. Then plug it in and make sure that your chain that you just made uh, so sorry, uh, chain run over here uh, you want to go to view world properties and set it to your world post process chain. So let's just put it right in there. And that tells it to use the post-process effect that you just made in your material. Okay, so then when you get that all set up, you need to go to Kismet and uh, set up a matinee sequence. And I'll, I'll do a new one here so I can just show you. Okay, so new matinee. Double click on that. Okay, so right click and say add new empty group and name it something relevant. So maybe uh, rain post process or rain material or whatever. Now you want to select your material in the content browser. Go back over to here, right click on that, and you want uh, float material param track. Okay. Then down here by materials, click the little plus, expand that, plug your material into there, and then here's where you type that param name. Now watch this. If you watched, I did drips with a capital D. Uh, if I do it with a 
lowercase d and press enter, it'll it'll still find it and it'll fix it for me. But if I do it wrong, uh, you know, it, it it it's just kind of a nice way to to see if you did it right by uh, having it autocorrect. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is uh, grab this and yank it way down so it's a short transition. I'm gonna add a keyframe by pressing enter, add a keyframe by pressing enter while you have this uh, material param track selected. You right click on whichever one and uh, set it to one in this case. So now if you watch over here, it goes from zero where there's no distortion to one where it's full distortion. Now you need a, a way for this to actually activate though. So what I've done, if I can uh, find it here real quick, oop, here's a builder brush over here. Uh, you get your builder brush, put where you want it, the size that you want it. You right click over here on volumes and you want a and you want a trigger volume. Okay, so as soon as you click on that, you have a trigger volume. You can still reposition it and do whatever you want with it. Uh, but while you have it selected, go back into Kismet, right click, you say new event, touch. You want to set the max trigger count to zero so that it goes on forever. Plug touch into play, untouched into reverse. And you want to right click and go to new variable and you want player. So when the player touches your volume, it's going to play your matinee, which, remember how that just showed up a second ago, as it plays through the matinee, you're going to get the distortion effect here. So that's how you do it for a simple rain effect. And uh, I'll show you a few more things in just a second. Let's take a look at this again though real quick. So I walk into my rain and I get a rain distortion effect. So and it's just a real easy way to do it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this real quick. Uh, I've got it set up so that when I walk away from the fire, it's a cold, cold night, so my screen starts to freeze up. See, and I'm supposed to try to run from fire to fire, and if I don't make it, I freeze to death. So it's a simple, simple little mechanic I saw in, I think, Crisis or something. And... Uh, I thought it was kind of neat, and it's actually real easy to set up again here. Uh, let's take a look at my Kismet sequence. <laughs> now, it looks really complicated, but all that it is, is I took... You know how I just showed you all those uh, those volumes and such? I took those, and I made four of them, one by each fire. And I just set it up so that when uh, when I spawn... Right, it's going to start playing the matinee, which is going to be, uh, see the screen effect there. And if I touch any, if I get close enough to the fires, it's going to play that in reverse. Right, so as I'm going along, it's getting colder and colder, I'm dying, and then I get close to the fire, it's going to play in reverse, and go back. Uh, then if... It actually gets all the way through the matinee. If the matinee is completed, then modify health to me, and uh, it'll kill me. So, just a, a real simple uh, game mechanic you can set up in, in matinee. Something like that. I don't know if you really want to mess with uh, like Unreal Script or anything, but uh, Kismet's just a real simple way that, where you can add uh, mechanics like that that would be more level-based than actual, you know, like game-based, if you know what I mean. So... Anyways, there you go, and uh hope that taught you something. hope it inspired you in some way or another, so good luck.